Hey there, welcome back to Becky Ballistics. As you probably already know, this is not a review channel, but more of a scientific one, so I tend to show guns that have something technically intriguing about them. And this one I'm going to show really has something to talk about. It is the cheapest production rifle on the market, at least as far as I know. As you may have guessed, I'm talking about the Kappalil Badger. Now, first of all, I want to make clear that I have no links at all with said brand, nor any economical interest in reviewing this gun, I'm just doing it because I want to share with you. Anyway, selling for about $170, it comes at a hard to beat price point. At the same time, it also has an interesting design. It is a single shot, hammer fired, break action rifle chambered in the main rimfire calibers, including the new 17 Winchester Super Magnum, and it kinda resembles those survival folding rifles that were given to air crews back in the days. Since I'm definitely not an expert in historical guns, I'd love if some of you could suggest which model would be more similar in the comments. Anyway, this particular one is chambered in 22 Winchester Magnum Rimfire and we're going to do some testing with it. But first, I'd like to give it a closer look, starting with the way it is meant to be transported. As you have seen, it can be folded by almost 180 degrees, almost halving the length of it, so to fit in a compact dedicated bag which is included with the price. The bag has straps and can be comfortably worn like a rucksack. Also, in order to fit in the bag, the breech must be open, so to render the gun inherently safe. At the same time, once you take it out of it, you just need to put a cartridge in the chamber and the gun is ready to shoot. The hammer is not cocked by the action, however, so it needs to be cocked manually. This feature probably made the action simpler, but is also handy if you want to keep around in the chamber without the hammer being cocked or having to be decocked on a loaded chamber. At the muzzle end, the 16.5 inches long barrel is threaded, allowing a suppressor to be fitted. When not in use, the threading is covered with a simple plastic cap. We can also see a fixed blade front sight and a fully adjustable rear peep sight. The elevation adjustment can also easily be done by hand, allowing an experienced shooter to quickly switch between different shooting distances. The breech locking is performed by a simple single lug and an automatic extractor allows the spent case to be easily removed. You can also see that every side of the barrel is equipped with a Picatinny rail and so is the part of the frame behind the trigger, allowing the gun to be fitted with accessories and a pistol grip if necessary. I felt that adding bulk to a weapon designed to be simple and compact kind of defeated the purpose of it, so I tested it without anything added. Finally, the stock is of a very simple steel wire construction and includes a handy 12 round holder. Anyway, let's get to the range and see what it can do. The first thing that I want to do is see how comfortable it is to shoot and also try to see what groups it is capable of. As you can see, my good friend Maurice came to help me. I would also like to show you what it really looks like when you're shooting it, so here's some first person footage. Finally, I did some accuracy testing myself. I shot 6 rounds with the same rear sight setting, aiming at the base of the black circle at 55 yards, and here's the target that I got. You can see the 6 shots group, which is about 2 inches wide. Remember that I'm not a professional target shooter and that I used only one type of ammo, which is these Winchester 40 grains hollow points, so I bet the rifle can do even better. Speaking of ammo, I actually also had available some RWS rounds and tried them as well. To my disappointment though, those cartridges literally made the little badger a single shotgun, meaning that after shooting that single shot you are not able to open the breech anymore. 
After struggling to get it open, I repeated the test, hoping that it could have been a faulty round, but exactly the same happened, and so I decided to stop using that ammo. Upon inspection, you can in fact see that the case bulged in the area where the extractor is and cracked open in the rim area. On the other hand, no signs of localized bulging are visible on the Winchester cases, so there's definitely something going on with the RWS ammo. I cannot know if the ammunition is faulty or if it is just too hot for the little badges breach. Maybe I will try them in a different rifle. For now, I'd like to do just one more thing, compare the performance of the 22 WMR to that of the more common 22 long rifle. To do that, I got Maurice to chronograph a few rounds and measured an average of about 590 meters per second or 1940 FPS, which is about 500 FPS faster than the fastest 22 long rifle load using the same bullet weight, which in turn means an increase in muzzle energy of about 80%. The higher velocity translates in a flatter trajectory and allows an extended range compared to the long rifle. I also thought some ballistic gel penetration test would have been nice, so I set up for my quick gel test. As you can see it is a little ghetto style, but it is clean and fast and avoids the mess and bulk of using the standard gel block since we don't need to refer to published data and are mainly interested in the penetration depth and bullet expansion. For the same reason I am using some low grade gelatin which is the reason why it is not clear. The mechanical properties however including the bloom hardness are the same as the high grade stuff. Once again, Maurice goes for the shot from a few feet, first with a 22 long rifle rifle, shooting a CCI minimag and then with the little badger shooting the Winchester hollow point. The long rifle stopped inside the bottle, almost touching the bottom of it. The WMR, on the other hand, had the force of coming out of the bottle, breaking the bottom and hitting the wooden board that was behind it. The very shallow dent it made on the board tells us it was going pretty slow when it exited the gelatin, so it wouldn't have gone through a lot more. Which makes sense, the bullets were similar, but one was doing 1900 FPS, while the other only 1300. But the resistance the gel opposes goes with the square of the velocity, which means that it takes much less space to go from 1900 to 1300 than it takes to go from 1300 to zero. So we actually get a deeper penetration, but not by much. Finally, here are the cavities. Keep in mind that since we were not using the standard gelatin block, and the gel was also confined by the bottle, we cannot compare these cavities to those found in literature, but we can still compare them to each other. As expected, the WMR left a wider channel, especially in the first half of the block, where it was going faster. So in the end, I think that the Kappa Little Badger is quite an interesting rifle to have and shoot, and I would also recommend the 22 WMR version if you're going to use it for hunting or trying some longer shots. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'd appreciate if you could use the thumbs up or down button to let me know. Subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you next time. Bye.